Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be replacing the tie rod on my 1994 Honda Accord. We took it for inspection, and inspection station informed us that the tie rod's failing. Now, first thing we're going to do is show you guys how they determined that. And in order to do that, the first thing you need to do is you're going to need to jack up your vehicle. You take your jack, be the floor jack, or even the one in your trunk, which is not as good, but either jack. Put it on a jack point, which you can find in your manual as far as where you jack on your vehicle to jack it up safely. Once it's up, you want to either take wooden blocks or jack stands. We have three ton jack stands we're going to be using today and two ton jack stands um, to make sure the vehicle is safely up and in place so it doesn't fall back on you when you're doing this procedure. You also want to put some type of block in front and behind your wheels so that it doesn't roll forward or backwards while you're doing this and come off your stands and your blocks. Once it's up, what we're going to do so we're going to take our wheel here, and we're going to turn it left to right and see how much play we have, and top and bottom. I'll show you that shortly as far as determining how much play you have. I believe the PA inspection uh, said quarter inch of play was the maximum allowed amount, but I don't think you want to take it up that high. You want to make sure it's nice and tight and snug. And we'll show you where that is on the tie rod once we pull it off, and you'll see how much play difference there is. All right, so let's get to it. Alright, so here we have our wheels now off. We have it up on our jack stands. We have the wheels chopped and the emergency brake on and the transmission in park. So everything's safe. I've taken it off. Now let me zoom in here and we'll get to um, specifics on the tie rod end itself. Okay, so here's our tie rod end. You'll know, note there's a cotter pin. There's a a bolt that runs through. This is the boot on your tie rod right here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to do it to play. There's play this way slightly. There's not a whole lot of play, but we're getting failed currently by the inspection station, so we're going to replace it anyway. So um, you'll note when you rock it this way, it's supposed to move this direction, but our boot is compressed somewhat. I'll show you a new boot. And you'll see, I'm not able to move this any direction. It's tight in all directions. See how this is compressed? Um, now, when you replace this, you want to make sure that you buy the right, the correct side. If you're replacing your driver's side front, you want to make sure that you have it same curve, same direction when you get the part and bring it home, because you you can get the wrong part and put on the wrong uh, slant, and that'll create problems for you, obviously. So at this point, we're going to take out the cotter pin, and we're going to loosen this bolt, and we're going to attempt to um, separate this boot from the sleeve without creating any damage. All right, so the first thing I like to do in these type of jobs is squirt a little WD-40 on there, because it loves to eat up rust, and that means less elbow grease more brain power. So, we got WD-40 on there. Let's see if we can get this thing worked out. Here's your cotter pin. Let's see if we can grip it with these. Pull it right up. Looks like it's going to come with relative ease. go. And it came. Cutter pin is now out. We'll set that someplace where we can remember where it is. Good look at it. Alright, the bolt has little teeth that come up around the screw, I guess to protect the screw. Alright, we're going to loosen that up. We don't want to take it all the way off because 
we're going to be clapping on this, this sleeve here to knock that boot off and we don't want it to come flying out as I want to do. So we're going to give it some room. There we are. And then what you're going to want to hit is right in here. You're going to try not to hit this rubber boot. You're going to hit right in here and you're going to see it pop down. Now we can take it off the rest of the way. Now the next trick in this affair is going to be, see if we can back this out some. Alright, so back up in there, right up in here, there's a screw that feeds onto the main tie rod end. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to note how far on this screw this tie rod is. So that when we put the new one on, we have this, the same spot on the screw, same spot on the screw, let's see, right here, as it is on the old one, as, as the new one that we screw on. Because if it's not in the same spot, what it'll do is it'll throw your alignment out on your wheel in the end. Alright, so we're going to want to screw this off, and you're going to want to count or mark. Count how many screws you do to rotate it off and rotate the, next one, rotate the new one back on, same spot. Or mark the thread with some chalk or something that you can note when you get to when you screw the new one on. Alright, so after fighting with this for a little bit, we decided the best bet would be to feed this back in, put the nut on, to stabilize this that we could torque on our nut here and a little WD-40 and elbow grease with this stabilized so we don't have to hold both sides and we were able to break that loose because see this can only go so far with it with it nutted in so now we we have that nut loose we can back that out just a little bit take our nut off here And like I said before, the trick is going to be feeding the new one on to the same spot on this stop nut as the last one. So, I counted about 24 overhand turns there. And we'll start back in and get the same one. Back in. We backed off some, so we'll take it right back up to where it needs to be. Here's our new washer nut. Or not, not a washer. Feed that in here. You're going to have to get the right angle on that to feed it back in. I 
Let's tighten back in. Make sure our lock nuts tightened. Back down. Then we slip our cutter pin back in. Then you simply put your wheel back on, jack yourself back down safely, and that should do it.